say that um, Jesus is actually half man and half God. But if you want to even extend it a little further and take mitochondrial DNA into the equation, Jesus is actually a little bit more uh, percentage of man than God. Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, mm. the, pro the problem with religious Didn't belief think of that, is did you, that Kent <laughs> you can't really get no. too detailed with the science. I mean, you, oh, you, but you, listen, you listen to uh, a guy like Hank Hanegraaff, the Bible Answer Man, and I believe he'll say something like, you know, and the Jesus is paradoxical in that he's 100% God and 100% man. And it's like, well, can't, you know. Yeah, uh, you get the that, special that's pleading 200 stuff. That's 200%. You know, yeah. that doesn't even make mathematical <laughs> sense, let alone scientific sense. Or maybe they'll just say that God's you know, DNA was just so super awesome, right, that right. it just completely over, <laughs> overwrote, it overwrote Mary. DNA Mary's. <laughs> and, uh, but, yeah, but then again, perhaps you might just get some Christians telling you, well, duh, but that was the whole idea because, you know, God intended Jesus to be human so that he could be uh, crucified and sacrificed and yeah, take and on male sin. So, and if he was 100% God, they couldn't, you know, kill him. So, you and had to, worse yet, yeah, I mean, you'll so. get people who are claiming that the less scientific sense it makes, the more proof that is that it's true because nobody would make up <laughs> such nonsense. Sure. So, <laughs> but I guess what you've got is just a really fun way to like confront a Christian at a party and make him go, dude, shut up, man. You suck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's just fun. <laughs> right. But, uh, if you have nothing better to do. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but I was, but it, I was also kind of... Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it does sort of lead one to speculate what, you know, just, you know, God's DNA, right? I mean, yeah, know, yeah. What a, <laughs> yeah right? It's just sort of what, what all is, how is that, you know, the properties in it that just make it... But that's, okay. that's, that's what, you, what happens when you apply, mm -hmm. like, our common time scientific knowledge to the almost laughable things that happen in the Bible, because if you think about it, I don't want to say for certain, but it was probably highly probable that way back then when they had um, a rudimentary understanding of how biological things functioned and uh, to try to be as um, non-crude as I can be, these uh, gentlemen um, way back when would be doing whatever they are doing and stuff would come out of their, uh, yeah. you know, right. they see it and they say, oh, that's my seed. I plant my seed inside of a woman just like we plant grain seeds. And so it's like, mm -hmm. obviously, this is coming from me. The woman is just a vessel for my seed. And that's why I'm like so much better than her. And she's only there. Mm. I can propagate my sons and all that stuff. And it's only now. Yeah, that patriarchal that, thing got going real early. So, yeah, when I guess when they figured that part out. Yeah. Um, right. So. Okay. Thanks for calling. Yeah, appreciate it very much. Yeah. See you later. Um, uh, now we've got Sam in Austin. Thanks for waiting, Sam. Are you there? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, I wanted to say something about uh, Pat. Oh, mm -hmm. be nice. Uh, she seemed to be uh, implying, trying to get to uh, an idea about uh, literalism and this idea of literalism as opposed right. to uh, reading uh, stories and looking for higher meaning and, uh, you know, uh, metaphors and mm -hmm. she used the word allegory and uh, mm -hmm. I, I think there's a, a larger point to be made around that and uh, I'm going to try to uh, put a unifying theme around all this jungle specific uh, and say that I think I think you cannot separate politics from religion and uh, that the Within politics, just within, as within re religion or vice versa, you have the, uh, the the people who seem to worship the past and these ideas of uh, of literalism, uh, for lack of a better term, as opposed to people who are trying to break free of, of the uh, traditions and move to a higher higher level of understanding, uh, which. Uh, Seems to be about a, more about agreement uh, as opposed to disagreement. And uh, um, uh, have we universalism uh, as opposed to uh, you know segregation and de uh, uh, <sighs> denominationalism and religion, the different religions. There seems to be uh, this, uh, 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 moving towards uh, a 
a, a point where people can see how they're the same rather than how they're different. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I agree with that stuff. I just think that the point at which we start to question her is, is where she comes up with all this stuff about chakras and traveling across the universe. It's not that I think she's wrong that you should treat the Bible as an allegory or even that it has some valuable stuff in there. Uh, if you read it as poetry or literature, it's just that I don't think the Bible has any special claim to knowledge, and this stuff that happens inside your head is not any special insight into the real way the universe works. Um, but we're uh, running out of time on the show, and uh, I would give you longer, but I think there's a caller that we'd like to get to and spend the last 10 minutes on. Sam. So, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, thanks for calling, for calling. Sam. <clears throat> uh, all right. So now we have Troy in Edmonton, Edmonton, Alberta. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. 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 So we had our discussion today by email, and I posted it on biblicality.com. Yes, and uh, just a mm -hmm. little, uh, give our viewers a, a quick uh, a prequel here. Uh, Troy and I have been discussing today. Um, he sent a question in and uh, having to do with origins, and he and I have been discussing back and forth and arguing back and forth about uh, a lot of the arguments that he's been putting forth. For God, so that's uh, that's the discussion he's talking about. Can you give about. our uh, your viewers a URL so that they can check out this stuff? It's simply biblocality.com. Biblocality.com. Okay. Just like just like it sounds. Okay. B i b l o. Got it. Okay. okay. Go on. Our... And so, and so basically, I think our our discussion is, I believe that something can't come from nothing because that which doesn't exist can't produce nothing. Nothing always comes from nothing, so that's a silly argument. And you can't really say there's an infinite regress because if there was an infinite regress of nature, you would have had an eternity for us to have come into being, for example. Mm -hmm. And we, we would have had more than enough time for that to happen. Well, an infinity, so it should have happened already. Why didn't it happen yesterday? So on that very same page, I even posted a video by William Lane Craig who who gives the, basically the same argument. We're saying that doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense, and he does some mathematical calculations to show that that's silly. So basically then, if the universe can't come from nothing, and it can't have always existed, we really are left with no other option than the uncreated creator. So the question then becomes who well, he is, so you can compare, and you come to Jesus Christ. Because, well, see, this is, where, this is where I'm gonna, this is where we kind of, um, this is this is the problem that I had with uh, the con that your drawing of that specific conclusion, is that even if the only option that you present is an uncreated creator, okay, for what you have to do first off is explain then how it is that this creator manages to be uncreated, how it is that this creator, if it is uncreated, avoids the uh, avoids the yeah avoids the problem of infinite regress that you would have with an eternally existing universe because the fact that creation is a causal process, right? Something doesn't exist and then it gets created and now it does exist. Because that is causal, you have this creator existing I think, essentially in a causal state, in a, in a temporal state. So why then would this creator... No, he's uncreated. Not, he exists outside of time by the evidence that nature can't have always existed. But where do you have, what, but what evidence do you have to present, and, and again, this is what we addressed in our email exchange, that there is a realm outside of time. And if there is such a realm... You, you don't what, have to what understand property, it, but you have to accept it by the evidence. Uh, we don't have, don't have to accept anything that there, if there's no evidence for it. And The, evi the evidence is that there cannot be an eternity of the past to cause and effects and the universe okay, can't come wait, from nothing. Let me cut to the chase here. Yeah. Uh, is there something that exists without having been created? Is there something that exists without having been created? Yes, that is the uncreated creator. Okay, then how do you, what are its properties and how do you know that? Uh, well, we know who he is specifically. We know he is he entered into his creation through the person of Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. How do we know that? What does that have I'm to do tell with you it? Why, wait, how we know what that. is this? Okay. Wait, no. What does this have to know? do with the uncreated creator thing? You're you're starting with this abstract philosophical concept, and then you're just jumping well, to. But I believe the stuff. Real. But if I believe the, the stuff that's in the Bible. Exist, if you if you're just going to argue, if you're just going to argue from the Bible, then why didn't you start there? What is all this abstract? Quasi pseudo philosophical stuff. Well, you're about here. Here, your here's own. the problem, and and I I 
I hope that I had made this very clear in our email exchange. You you are asserting the existence of an uncreated creator. No, no. You are asserting the existence of, of a, an uncreated creator. You are asserting the existence because of a realm. There's no other option available. Since nature can't have always existed and can't come from nothing, you're left with no other choice than an uncreated creator. How do you know that that is the only other option, though? that is to our heads to accept. How do you know that that's the only other option? That's right. How do you know that that is a false dilemma? I'm asking you. How do you know what that you are not dilemma? committing the fallacy How, of the you false have to dilemma? The false dilemma, if there is one, I haven't okay. heard any from you. The false dilemma that you are making is uh, because there is, there is because there is no because in the natural universe thing you can't have infinite regress and you can't have something coming from nothing. Therefore, the only other possible option is. Not only, not just an uncreated creator, not just any uncreated creator, but the uncreated creator that specifically happens to be the biblical God. And, and how do you know that? The biblical God is because you personally can't find a natural explanation for the origin of the disciples' belief. Oh, but, but what, but so what stops me? Come up with, what, so if we can't come up with it on with a specific explanation, then we must assume that your magical story about a book thousand from a book thousands of years ago, which describes a detailed story about a God coming to Earth, must be true because we can't think of something else. That's right. Okay. All right, and you don't understand why that's the argument from ignorance. And it shouldn't right. be that complicated because it's just a simple. It's not that complicated. It's nonsense. It, you don't understand why that is the argument from ignorance fallacy. Proved, that's why you prove Jesus is God, and that's why you're actually leading people to Christ on your program because they can see you can't come up with a natural explanation. That's awesome. We, when we point <laughs> out that you're making a logical fallacy, that I, I hardly imagine that that's leading people to God unless, like you, they don't understand what logical fallacies are. I pointed out a stream of logical fallacies that you what made. What you're doing is you're asserting a logical fallacy, but you haven't actually identified I'm not asserting it. a logical the, the logical fallacy that you're making is a classic argument from ignorance because you guys don't what, have a natural answer. My magical That's answer has to be right. Is a classical argument from ignorance, isn't it? Excuse no. me. No, it's not. <laughs> You are asserting the existence of a magical God, and you're doing it on the basis that no, science magical, can't magical, come up with an, a, a natural answer. Right. Here, you that said, is a you classic said, argument from ignorance. You said, that, you said that we can't come up with, a, with an alternate uh, explanation, and therefore uh, the God of the Bible must be true. I've actually got That's an right. alternate explanation. It's the great green Arkel seizure who sneezed the universe out of his nose. Now, and is nothing like God the God of the God. universe. That God is inaccessible, so nobody knows about him. If oh, God now we're going to a completely is, different argument. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, well, he's not inaccessible? Can I give you one sentence that is a sentence by the most famous lawyer of the 19th century? Uh, appeal to authority. Just one quick sentence. You're just okay. doling out the, <laughs> the fallacies like a sentence, vending machine. Please dude. let me read it to you. <laughs> sure. Every, like every document like apparently ancient coming from the proper repository or custody and bearing on its face, no evident marks of forgery, the law presumes to be genuine and evolves on the opposing party the burden of proving to be otherwise. So are you saying that the greatest lawyer in history uh, recognized spectral evidence in court which was, uh, which was discounted during the Salem witch trials? All evidence is in play here. You can use anything you want. Okay, so that guy clearly didn't know much about American law. Mm -hmm. He, he, they say he produced the most jurisprudence of any lawyer, of, of more of that all That may be true, of, but of he the, still uh, believed in stuff that people at the Salem witch trials were recognizing is invalid legal I don't know standards. anything about the Salem witch trials. I really uh, don't obviously care about Obviously, you don't know anything either. about very much, man. I mean, Troy, we've pointed out every single fallacy that you've brought out. and it is, I haven't heard one yet. Uh, you have. You've just ignored them. You're, 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 no, you're, we've you're now doing the argument from. We, we, so he's I mean, it is, I don't know what it is. You haven't said it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I explained very clearly, and you know what? Over hey, what a thousand of our it? viewers no, heard it. me tell you what the argument from ignorance was that you were making. Now, if you're sitting here with your fingers in your ears, going "nuh uh," that's on you, man. Yeah. That's I not your problem. Doing. I'm sorry, man. Look, I wish you'd called sooner. This could. We. Well, I am going to post. Actually, not really. I am going to post <laughs> to the blog, blog to, exactly, and, and I'm going to quote him directly. Our viewers can decide for themselves whether or not Troy actually knows what he's talking about. But okay. he is he anyway. is just advancing a collection of fallacies. He does not appear to know the difference between what is real and what he is simply imagining, and he doesn't understand what proof is. Okay, he makes and that be our and show. Proof. And goodbye, everyone. Thanks for calling anyway, come Troy. Come to Gills and we'll keel haul you. Bye. Hey, woo. <laughs> We're out of time.